Let's take an early look at some top sleepers among both starting and relief pitchers. I'm going to start in LA, where Angels fans don't have a lot to be happy about these days. All right, so you lost maybe the biggest name and best player in the universe in Shohei Otani. Not going to be pitching anyways this year. And so while this guy is not going to be the next Otani, I will say I have some high hopes for Chase Silseth. Now, this is a player I talked a lot about late last season on waiver wire videos, recommended him as a streamer and then as a pickup. And there's good reason, because if you look after the All-Star break, he was so much better than he was earlier in the season, and he wound up being a strong presence for that rotation. I think he's going to stick in the rotation this year. In his seven starts in the second half of last year, he posted a 3.21 ERA and a 1.10 whip. The main thing that you may not notice if you just look at the season-long totals, you'll say the walk rate is absurd, but it dropped a lot after the All-Star break, and he wound up with 41 strikeouts in the last 33 innings. This truly was a tale of two halves. Sil Sith is somebody who didn't have a lot of big league experience, and he was moved from the bullpen to the rotation back and forth. Once he finally got a chance to establish himself in the rotation, he was really good. I think he can still be that. Now, there's no guarantee that he does have a starting job locked up, but we'll see how spring training plays out. For right now, this is definitely somebody I'm going to take a flyer on. In Cincinnati, pretty sure that Graham Ashcraft, if healthy, is going to have a rotation spot. He was there all last year and posted some okay numbers. He logged 145 and two-thirds innings, ended up with a 4.76 ERA and a 1.37 whip. Oh, and only an 18% strikeout rate as well. So what's the upside here at all? This is a case where we have to look beyond just the stats and look into the metrics this is a pitcher who somehow has gotten by with very disappointing, if not at least mediocre numbers, despite having some of the best stuff. And when I say stuff, I actually mean the metric stuff. This is something developed by Eno Saris of The Athletic. There's a metric called Stuff Plus. And it turns out that Graham Ashcraft has the best stuff out of all these starting pitchers out there. And he was the biggest gainer last year, a 128 Stuff Plus rating. What Ashcraft is, he's a ground ball pitcher first. He really gets by with a sinker and then his wipeout pitch where it does get strikeouts if he does any, it's a slider. His slider is really good, but he only throws it as a secondary pitch. He's really trying to induce soft contact, which is good because he pitches in Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, which is a hitter's haven. So when Ashcraft is on, he's keeping the ball on the ground, getting those outs. He will get the occasional strikeout, but he could be doing even better. If we see a third pitch really become effective, he could generate more swings and misses, see that strikeout rate increase. He battled a couple of nagging injuries here and there. And so while the ballpark doesn't do him any favors, he is on a team that now has some talent. It looks like he could win some games. He'll post some quality starts because he's able to eat up innings. So while Ashcraft doesn't look like a guy who's too promising for fantasy, there is some room for improvement here. No question about the talent for Max Meyer. This is number three overall draft pick from the Miami Marlins a couple of years ago. One of their top pitching prospects until Tommy John came knocking and wiped out his season. So we don't have a lot to work with here in terms of his stats, recent production, but we know the arm talent is undeniable. This guy has extreme heat when he is on the mound. He has a fastball in addition to a slider and a change. And one thing that's interesting in his rehab, working his way back from surgery, he's been working on a sinker and that might help him also get some more ground ball outs. So not just trying to induce swings and misses. When opening day comes this year, he'll be exactly one year removed from surgery. Of course, they're gonna take it careful with their top prospect. But you could definitely see him getting a spot in that rotation, especially with Sandy Alcantara going to be out for the season. Don't expect a lot early in the season. Sure, he'll be on some innings restrictions, but definitely worth a stash in that rotation because he has tremendous upside. Of course, the Marlins, if anything, they know how to develop pitchers. Another flamethrower with a top prospect pedigree in a great situation in terms of ballpark factor. Not a great team. But definitely a great place to pitch is Oakland, at least for now. Mason Miller, a guy that we heard a lot about last year, but could not stay healthy. In fact, this kind of says it all if you use fan graphs at all, which I use all the time. Summing up Miller in one phrase, Miller has huge stuff 
and has been hurt a lot. But here's the thing with Miller. During the winter meetings, Oakland, of course, not a big player. But one thing that the GM has said, which kind of took people by surprise, is Mason Miller now is being considered for the closer role, which means he's not even going to be in the rotation. You might think this would hurt his bottom line in fantasy, but maybe this is a good thing because it will ensure that he's a better chance to stay healthy, only pitching one inning at a time. He's going to get those late inning opportunities and his value getting saves as opposed to trying to get wins for the A's might actually improve. If you think about it, he profiles pretty well for a closer, has a 70 grade fastball, averages about 90 miles per hour on it. I know taking a chance on a closer in Oakland can be risky. Been there, done that every year. It's like we have no idea who the guy is, how many games are they really going to win. It doesn't matter. Even bad teams can have closers who get 30 plus saves. You always want to speculate on saves later in the draft. Sure, lock down one elite closer early if you want, but after that, you just wait. It's just better off to take a chance on a flyer, a guy like this on a team who's not getting a lot of pub. We don't even know for sure if he's going to be the closer. Hey, take a shot here. The talent is undeniable. And I feel sort of the same way about Gregory Santos for the White Sox. Only notched five saves last year. Could be in a committee with Garrett Crochet. It's hard to say right now, but Santos has the makeup to be a closer. Santos averages almost 99 on his fastball. He also has great stuff. In fact, he ranked in the top 10 in terms of stuff plus as far as relief pitchers go. Although his strikeout rate wasn't really high last year, he gets a 13.4% swinging strike rate, so there's definitely room for improvement. What I like best is the fact that he does have control, a walk rate under 6%, and he limits hard contact. Only a 322 x wo bacon, which is expected weighted on-base average on contact. He doesn't put guys on base with free passes. He doesn't give up a lot of hard contact, and he does have the ability to earn whiffs. Look, White Sox, not going to be a great team this year. It still doesn't matter. This is exactly the type of situation where you want to go after a closer on the cheap. And then if you want to take on some risk for a late round pitcher, preferably your last pick here, speculate on Aaron Ashby from Milwaukee. The risk here is just health related. Coming off a of shoulder surgery, didn't pitch at all last year. Now, if you go back a year ago and look at my favorite preseason sleepers for pitchers, last year, Ashby was on there, thought he could have a breakout season. Clearly, it didn't happen. Is this going to be the year? Well, we'll see. The thing is, you're going to have to wait because spring training will tell whether he's fully back or not. He's been rehabbing. Early reports were he was down a couple of ticks in velocity, but again, this was late last year. I have a feeling he should be pretty good to go because it will have been a year since his surgery. And it's also worth noting that GM said that he is expected to be in the rotation at some point. It's just a matter of when he's ready. Ashby also a ground ball first pitcher who does have some K upside. So while I honestly don't love speculating on injured pitchers, he is one that I'm going to be in on because I can grab him with my final pick in a draft and stash him. And as soon as he's back in that rotation, see what he can do. Those are some of my favorite early sleepers at pitcher. If you want to know some hitters you should be keeping an eye on, check out this video here.